you could be describing precisely the kind of uh, process and dialogue that, uh, that the, the President Obama and his own sure. cabinet struggled over in terms of intervention in Syria. I mean, the, the, what we now know is that, oversimplifying the story, is that it ultimately was the President himself uh, who made the call that we would not make a much deeper engagement in Syria other than the, the kind of secret boots on the ground that we have there now over the recommendations of Secretary Clinton and over the recommendations right. of Defense Secretary Gates. Uh, and so, but very similar, if you tried to, I mean, those are quite parallel kinds yes, of situations. Very, very yes. much so. And, and, and I yeah. predict that it will be seen as in a much more positive light in the future uh, to stay out of that region uh, than it has been now. And the reason that I predict this is because that's how it worked out in the past. Eisenhower was actually vociferously criticized in the press and in the public and in Congress uh, for not sending in troops into Indochina in 1954. We often think, well, what a wise man he was and how much credit he probably got at the time for not getting us entangled in that terrible Vietnam War. On the contrary, he took a beating and he didn't care. He said, I, if we send troops into Vietnam, we'll be there for decades. It's a terrible idea. And the parallel today is, is Libya, isn't it? In fact, I, that was what I, Obama did not want to get into Libya. Secretary Gates did not want to get into Libya. And, and he was pressured by, by, by Mrs. Clinton, Secretary of State, uh, Samantha Powers, I forget what her role was then. And he, and he finally uh, it allowed us to participate. And we know we can see the results. Mm -hmm. And we can see the results in the campaign, too. I think the country, I'm not going out on a limb here, but surely the country is tired of war. And we've been at it now for a decade and a half. We recognize we have responsibilities in crucial parts of the world. Uh, uh, we're not going to give those up. But nonetheless, the kind of relentless sacrifice of young people uh, that, uh, that has, has marred our political landscape um, is now, you know, Obama has dialed it back. He's taken a lot of criticism for it. And we're not, we don't know how it will work out. It may be that we'll have to ramp them up again. But, but I agree with you. I think there are some echoes um, here. And I think it's, it's telling that these decisions have come in the latter part of Obama's presidency, as he has learned how difficult it is to be the commander in chief, what the consequences are of being a country constantly at war, the sacrifices you have to make. Eisenhower knew that going into the presidency, he had that advantage, and I think that may have played some role in his decision to grasp the armistice in Korea early.